Hey, Sparty, you're a Viking, right? You mean because my ancestors were inbreeding in Scandinavia for the last 1,500 years? Like, all of them? No, I mean, well, you're a sailor, right? And you went sailing last summer, and you did it in the Skagerrak, and summer sailor, that's what Viking means, so like that. Well, not really. If it did, I guess yes, but whatever it means, a Viking such as in a people never really existed. It's just another modern fantasy about the Middle Ages. Oh, like like the, like the horns. Oh, don't get me started. Don't get him started. I'm Indy Nidell. I'm Spartacus Olson. And this is another Time Goes Short video where we take away all your fun fantasies about history. Just destroy them. And this time we're going after the Vikings. All of them, because we are going to eliminate the whole element of Vikings from the equation. Now, we know very little about the mid-7th to the end of the 11th century in Northern European history. A friend of mine who wanted to study Norse history went out to shine a light on the misunderstandings about the so-called Viking era. But as he later said, once he got out his academic flashlight, there was simply nothing much to shine a light on. What we do know is based on conjecture from archaeological finds and a lot of second and third hand sources. For certain, it's a period of extensive migration from northernmost Western Europe to the east, west, and south. It's a time of fantastic tales of barbarism, piracy, and conquest by bands of what we today refer to as Vikings. But these Vikings, as a people, never existed, and the very word is never used to denote a people in their time, and not for a long time after. It's highly contested where the word comes from. There are several competing theories. But whatever it meant, it was adopted in Middle English as meaning a pirate from Scandinavia. Even then, though, it was very uncommon before the 18th century. In their own time, these pirates themselves identified as members of a tribe, the band they belonged to, or according to where they lived or where they were born. Which, as we today know from paleoforensic archaeology and DNA research, was mostly Northern Europe, but also the rest of Europe, even parts of North Africa and the Middle East. Yes, because they were pirates. They traded slaves and they press ganged people wherever they went. But wait a second. Were then all Scandinavians, Norsemen, Danes, or whatever you want to call them, were they all pirates? Not by long stretch. Most were farmers, fishers, and craftspeople, but some were barbaric warriors for sure. It's Arr. all about trade. In the autumn and winter, they would collect and produce valuable things like furs, minerals, and craft objects. The men, mostly the men, would set out in their boats to trade these goods in the spring and the summer. The vast majority, the women, the children, some of the men, and the slaves, would stay back home and they would run the farms and the fisheries. Now, this is a time of great turmoil and little statehood, so trade can mean anything from buying and selling to rape and plunder. In any case, many families, even whole tribes, also settled in other lands, which at times led to conflict and war. But here's the funny thing. These wars, which today are popularly understood as Vikings against civilized folk, were most often fought between previous settlers and new settlers, both of whom often came from the same place originally. But how then did the Viking myth arise? How? Well, it's rather simple, actually. When the Middle Ages are rediscovered in the 18th century, the word is taken out of context and gradually comes to mean someone from the north. Back then, the basis for understanding these times are largely the Icelandic sagas and a few other texts. Written down long after the period, they are based on very, very little reality. The historiographers of the 18th and 19th century then shoehorn all of this into their own understanding of the word. So it becomes stories of defending one's nation against invasion especially Great Britain. A huge part of the migratory events are left out of this narrative, like, like the emergence of the Kievan Rus as a ruling class in today's Ukraine, Belarus, and Western Russia, which is simply considered part of something else. In the regions where the Vikings are supposed to be from, it becomes a proud national origin story, which might seem cool until you look at how much of this identitarian myth of a Germanic warrior culture is adopted by the Nazis as they reinvent German history. Yep. The Nazis. In 2021, though, we historians have stopped using the sagas as research. Modern archaeological methods are finally allowing us to shine a little bit more light on the period. And the story that is emerging is one of technological innovation, growing trade, migration, and integration by a very, very diverse population. Not a long string of brutal, bloody conquest by mushroom-crazed berserkers of sturdy Scandinavian stock. 
That's a great line to end with. Mushroom crazed berserkers of sturdy Scandinavian stock. That's my next band, okay? Well, that is it for today. I mean, we're sorry to destroy your myth about the Vikings, but a couple years ago, we did a whole series of holiday season-related specials right here on Time Goes. And to get into the spirit of, well, spirit of something, you can check out the playlist right where? Right here? Why not here? Why not? Okay, right there. You check out the playlist right there. It's really good stuff. And join the Time Ghost Army to become part of our conquest of the lands of nonsense with reasonable history at timeghost.com. Timeghost.com. Don't go there. <laughs> at timeghost.tv or patreon.com. All right? And we will see you next time. Excelsior! Excelsior!